Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Um, I know you don't want to get into the intelligence, but can you give us any sense what has changed over the past 24 or 48 hours to lead to your new level of concern? Well, first I would say when I uh, appeared on the Sunday shows last weekend, I made the point that we were in the window that Russian military action could begin any day now. And that remains true. It could begin any day now. And it could occur before the Olympics have ended. Uh, I'm not going to get into intelligence information, but if you look at the disposition of forces in both Belarus and in Russia on the other side of the Ukrainian border, from the north, from the east, the Russians are in a position to be able to mount a major military action in Ukraine any day now. And for that reason, we believe uh, that it is important for us to communicate to our allies and partners, to the Ukrainians, and to the American citizens who are still there. I want to be crystal clear, though. Uh, we are not saying that a decision has been taken, a final decision has been taken by President Putin. What we are saying is that we have a sufficient level of concern based on what we are seeing on the ground and what our intelligence analysts have picked up uh, that we are sending this clear message. And it remains a message that we have now been sending for some time. And it is, yes, it is an urgent message because we are in an urgent situation. But just to yes. clarify, so you now believe that Russia has all the forces it needs to mount a full-scale invasion of Ukraine? What I'm saying is that uh, Russia has all the forces it needs to conduct a major military action. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by, quote, full-scale invasion, but Russia could choose in very short order to commence a major military action against Ukraine. Yes. Has NATO told the president that it will call up the NATO response force of Americans who have been put on that short leash? And is the president prepared to send additional unilateral forces to our partners in the, the border region of Ukraine? And is it your judgment and the judgment of U.S. intelligence and the U.S. government that Putin is behaving as a rational actor in his judgments at this point? So on the question of the president authorizing more unilateral U.S. forces to Europe, he's been clear all along that he is open to doing so as circumstances warrant. But I want to be very clear about something. These deployments of U.S. service members to Poland, to Romania, to Germany, uh, these are not uh, soldiers who are being sent to go fight Russia in Ukraine. They are not going to war in Ukraine. They are not going to war with Russia. They're going to defend NATO territory consistent with our Article 5 obligation. They are defensive deployments. They are non-escalatory. They are meant to reinforce, reassure, and deter aggression against NATO territory. In terms of the U.S. forces that have been put on heightened readiness to be deployed in the event of a NATO decision to deploy them. Uh, the President had the chance as part of the discussion today to hear from the Secretary General. No decisions have been taken in that regard, but those forces stand by should a decision be taken by the North Atlantic Council to call up the NATO uh, response force uh, and a request comes in for American forces to be a part of that. Finally, I can't get inside the head of President Putin. I'm not going to speculate as to his motivations, his intentions, or at this point his decisions. All I will say is that we are ready either way. If President Putin wants to engage in diplomacy, we are prepared to engage in diplomacy. We would like to find a diplomatic path forward, and we've sketched out the parameters and principles for that. If President Putin chooses to move forward, we will work in lockstep with our allies and partners to respond decisively.